Welcome to Small Group Leadership Training. My name is Joe Stearns. I'm a minister with the Broward Church. And today we're going to be talking about the personal Bible study of a leader. And let's start with a passage of Scripture. So in 2 Timothy chapter 2, in verse 15, it says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly handles the word of truth. One of the reasons we're doing this lesson is we don't want you as a leader to be ashamed of your preparation as a leader. And what this scripture is indicating is that one of the very best ways you can prepare as a leader is to know your Bible well and to handle it correctly. So I hope today's lesson is challenging to you and an upward call to your growth in your personal Bible study, our admonition for you is to make it a goal to become an expert in the Bible. Now you might think, I'm just not that type of person. Like maybe you didn't do great in school or you're not a, you don't enjoy reading books, but I don't want you to be intimidated by this idea. You can decide to become an expert in the Bible or at least get on that journey. I don't call myself an expert in the Bible, but that is my goal. I consider myself a serious student of the Bible, and that's our encouragement to you, is to have that goal of having a genuine expertise. Now what we're going to do in today's lesson is talk about five reasons to grow in your Bible knowledge, and then we're going to give you nine tips on ideas for growing in your Bible knowledge. Why growing your Bible knowledge? The first thing we wanted to share with you is you want to know how God thinks and feels. If you're going to be a church leader at any level, this is probably one of your highest callings. Well, Jesus in the greatest commandment gives this to us as our highest calling to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And therefore, it's the role of every Christian and especially a leader to know how God thinks, how he feels about things, and how he relates to people. Um, so you want to know that as a leader. The best way to do that is through personal Bible study. A second reason to grow in your Bible knowledge, and we're going to have five reasons, but these five reasons are not a complete list. There's a lot of great reasons to study the Bible. We just hope that these will be motivational and helpful to you. Second reason we have is victory over sin. In the scriptures, it talks about this. In Psalms 119, it says, How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. And down in verse 11, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so as a leader in dealing with your own sin, and as a leader helping members in your group to have victory over their own sin, you need to know the Bible better and better as time goes along. A third reason is to be thoroughly equipped. Thoroughly equipped as a leader, thoroughly equipped as a Christian. It says all scripture in 2 Timothy 3, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, here we go, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You want to be skilled as a leader? I would not start necessarily with leadership training in some other area. I would start with the Bible. Leadership training is all great, but I think our foundation should be the Scriptures. Another reason for growing in your not Bible knowledge is tapping into the power of the Bible to have impact for other people. Listen to these scriptures. In Romans 1.16 it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. So in this passage it's talking about how this gospel message that we find starting in the Old Testament but coming together in the New Testament, it has power to change lives. In the same book, in Romans 10, it says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. If you, as a small group leader, want to have an impact on other lives, and you want the Bible to have an impact on your own life, 
then you need to know the scriptures, the gospel message, and the scriptures themselves create faith and bring about salvation even to eternal life. And that's our last point, is that the Bible is the path to eternal life. And our longest scripture for today here, it says in John 12, it says, if anyone hears my words, this is Jesus speaking, but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. I didn't come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them on the last day. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me has commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. So we view as, as our doctrinal theology, all of us as Christians, that there is a judgment day. And on the judgment day, God will determine whether we're going to have eternal life or not. And it is an open book test. And whether we have eternal life or not is going to be determined, as Jesus himself said, by whether we have we have learned and put into practice the principles of the gospel in order to be saved and have eternal life. It is the key. The Bible is the key to eternal life for us. So an encouragement that we have is that you as a small group leader commit to daily Bible study. I would encourage you, this is not a rule, it's just a recommendation. I would encourage you to not study the Bible sporadically, but to study the Bible deeply and consistently, even on a daily basis. Now, we have nine ideas for growing in personal Bible study. We're going to go through them rather quickly. The first is to move beyond the short daily devotional. Now, I took a screenshot of a Google search on devotionals, and you can see there's all these different ministries, In Touch Ministries, uh, today's inspiring Bible conversations. There's our daily bread. Look, there's a lot of people who are offering a short scripture and then a meditation on that scripture. I'm not against this idea, but if you're going to be a leader in the Lord's church, I believe you should move beyond the daily devotional. When you began re when you begin reading entire chapters or books of the Bible, you're going to catch themes that are important to God. You're going to catch themes where God has inspired a writer to meet particular needs, and you're going to miss those themes, miss those ideas, miss that flow of the scriptures. If you're just doing the short daily devotional where you read one or two verses, get a meditation out of it, and move on, I would encourage you to grow past having your personal Bible study just being a daily devotion on. I want to challenge you to read the entire Bible. If you have not read the entire Bible, I would encourage you to read it beginning to end every single word. And here's my encouragement to you. Be mentally tough, not weak. Pay your dues. Look, I know that there's portions of the Bible that can be challenging, even from our perception, tedious or boring. Now, the more that you read the Bible, the more you get a godly perspective on those things so they're no longer as tedious or as boring. But look, for some reason, God has made some of the earlier parts of the Bible more repetitive, where you really have to pay your dues. Don't be wimpy about this. Get in there and study it. Some of us in school had subjects, maybe all of us, had subjects that were challenging. I'm not that strong at mathematics. So when I took trigonometry, when I took calculus, I had to fight to get a decent grade in those classes because it didn't come natural. If there's areas of the Bible you gotta fight to stay, to pay attention, to think about the concepts, to learn from it, to find out why it's purposeful, stay in there, pay your dues, God will bless your efforts. And as the old saying goes, I know this isn't a scripture, but I think this principle applies. It says a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I know the Bible is kind of a long book. If you read four chapters a day, it'll take you ten and a half months just to read the Bible one time through. But don't let that intimidate you. Take that step forward. Get on the journey. It's going to be a lifelong journey, but we want to challenge you to begin that journey. 
The next challenge we have, or the next idea we have, is to read the Bible cover to cover more than once. Now, I would encourage you to find other ways, additional ways to study the Bible besides reading it from cover to cover. But the reason we're giving you this challenge is a lot of times when you first read the Bible cover to cover, you're just kind of getting oriented. You're just kind of learning your way around. But when you begin to read the Bible through more than once, you're gonna discover a miracle. And the miracle is this. Even though the Bible functions as a library of 66 different books, you'll begin to see the Bible function as one book with one story. Uh, The term that a lot of people use is there's, there's an arc to the Bible story. There's a plot to the Bible story. And the only way that 40 authors over a 1,000 year period of time through the Old Testament into the New Testament could participate in one long story is that God was miraculously guiding them. And you're gonna begin to pick up as you read the Bible through more than once, that arc of that Bible story, and you're gonna be able to see God's hand working a lot more. The next thing we'd like to encourage you to do, rather than those short daily devotionals, is to study entire books of the Bible. If you study the book of Ephesians, or you study the book of Isaiah, and you decide to study that book beginning to end, you're going to learn a lot of how God thinks, themes of the Bible that are going to be beyond, once again, the daily devotional. In addition to studying books, another idea is to do topical studies, doctrinal studies, or character studies in the Bible. Now, on how to read the Bible, we would encourage you to read the Bible slow, but also at times to read the Bible fast. I'm gonna give you a brief demonstration of what I'm talking about. A way to read the Bible slow is to not read past anything without understanding it first. So if you're reading Ephesians 1, you would start with Paul. Now, just this first word, you could stop and do a study on Paul. You could read the second half of the book of Acts, starting in chapter 13. You could read commentaries or books about Paul. And then an apostle. Well, what's an apostle? So you can do a study on the word apostle. You can do a study on the word Christ, which is not Jesus' last name. As a matter of fact, 60% of the time, Paul puts the word Christ before the name Jesus. 40% of the time, he puts it after the name Jesus. Why is that? Well, you can study that out. And so this is an example of how you can go through the Bible slowly and carefully. But if you do that, and you do it that slow, you're actually often going to miss themes that show up in the Bible if you read quickly. So another way, a great way, it's not a lazy way, a great way to study the Bible would be sit down with the book of Ephesians, which is six chapters, and read it in one sitting. Or read three chapters at a time or two chapters at a time. As you do that, it's going to open up things about the Bible that you don't pick up on usually when you're doing it slow. So I would recommend reading the Bible both slow and fast at different times in your Bible study. Another idea is to memorize the scriptures on your own. Don't wait for some teacher in some class to ask you to memorize the scriptures. Pick some scriptures you want to learn and memorize them on your own. Another idea is to alternate between the Old Testament and the New Testament and don't spend all your time just in one of those. And then uh, another idea is to... um, study about the Bible, not just the Bible itself. And what I mean by that is to become comfortable with using resources for your Bible study, such as commentators, lexicons, books or articles about aspects of the Bible. I'm actually going to give you a couple of examples here. This is a book right here called The Gist of Romans, written in 1957 by K.C. Moser. This is a commentary on the book of Romans. It's relatively short, You want to study Romans, you could choose, if you want, to pick a commentary book like this or articles and shorter commentaries that you can often find for free online um, uh, that are 
easily accessible. Here's another idea. This is a book called The King Jesus Gospel, written by a scholar named Scott McKnight. This talks about fully understanding exactly what the gospel is. It was a great read, really helpful. Another idea is um, to use um, books about hermeneutics, which are principles to interpret the Bible. Here's one called How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth. There's another book by Steve Kennard, uh, Getting the Most Out of Your Bible Study. There's several books like that. R.C. Sproul's wrote a book like that. What I'm currently reading right now is uh, Four Views on Women and Church Leadership. Should a woman preach from the pulpit? Should a woman lead a church? Well, if you want to tackle that issue, you can not only read the scriptures, but you can guide, get guides like this to give a perspective on the scriptures that will help you be better informed on those kind of things. And the last idea that we have to share, uh, actually, I'm sorry, I already covered that, is to alternate between the Old and the New Testament. Please strive to be a Bible expert don't be intimidated by the idea. And our last admonition for you is this. In 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1, it says, Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. So as you grow in your Bible knowledge, please do not have the motive of learning the Bible so you can show off your Bible knowledge. Have a motivation of learning the Scriptures so that you can build each other up with love. Our hope and prayer in the Broward Church is that God will bless your honorable work as a small group leader.